morning again. If you are visiting us here for the first time or watching us for the first time, a few weeks ago we began a new sermon series um, on the Ten Commandments, and the, na the name for this series is The Ten Truths About Freedom. Okay? And today we're going to be looking at the Fifth Commandment. Just to let you know, we are doing this in the reverse order. We began from the 10th commandment, and the hope is that soon we'll be um, heading to the first commandment. So today, we're going to be looking at the fifth commandment. Let, let me tell you a story um, before we dive into this Bible passage. There was a mom who decided to prepare some pancakes to her kids. Do you kids like pancake? Yeah? Do you like pancake, Olivia? Yeah? So this mother was preparing some pancakes for her two children, Brian and Ryan. Okay? As she was preparing, Ryan said, I'm going to be the first one. And the mom thought, oh, this is a nice opportunity to be teaching my kids the importance of not, 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 not being too selfish. So she said to her kids, Brian and Ryan, you know what? If Jesus was here, he would say, I'll let my brother go first. And as she said that, Brian raised his hand and he said, So you, Brian, you be Jesus and let me have the first pancake. Although this is a little bit funny, and you know I'm not good at telling jokes, but that reveals a lot about us, doesn't it? Even when we are kids, we are not that innocent, are we? Sometimes we can be naughty, right? Sometimes we don't think about others as we should. Sometimes we think too much about ourselves. And adults, we are not different. We've got something in our heart called ego. We tend to be selfish, egocentric. And because of that, we think we can do whatever we want without thinking about those around us. This little idol called ego inside of our hearts tell us that, come on, do whatever you want, not take into account what God wants. And we know that there are different kinds of freedom, right? Right? There is the kind of freedom that doesn't care about others, doesn't care what God thinks is good and, and perfect and pleasing for us. But there is the kind of freedom that is wise. It's the kind of freedom that allows us to use the desire, the opportunities, and the abilities to do whatever we want, but always take into account what God wants. Never regretting the consequences of our choices. And today we're going to be looking at the fifth commandment that says, Honor your parents. Honor your parents. Don't use your freedom to do whatever you want. Because our choices have consequences. So parents, they need, they need to look after us. They need to train us, especially the kids, okay? And sometimes they're going to tell us to do things that we don't want to hear, we don't want to do. But they need to give us boundaries, okay? And today we're going to understand why. But before I move on, before we look at this Bible verse, Exodus 20, verse 12, let me pray, asking God to help us to focus here today, okay, helping us to have the desire to listen to His voice. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we come before You because we know that unless Your Holy Spirit helps us here, we're just going to be listening and gaining knowledge. But we know that through your Holy Spirit, 
our hearts can be changed, then we come before you asking you to change our hearts. Help us to become more like you as we study the fifth commandment. I pray especially for the kids of this church. Would you please help them to see the importance of this commandment? I pray for the parents of this church. I pray that you may show them how important they are for their kids, for their development, for our society. We all know that we have a sinful nature. So I pray that you help us I pray that you give us the knowledge that we need to value, to respect you, to love you, to honor you with all our hearts, with everything we have. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So we all have freedom, but we need to be careful on how we use our freedom, and that applies to the kids as well. And today we're going to look at this fifth commandment to understand that when we dishonor our parents, when we don't take into account the importance of having parents, helping us to become more like Jesus, we hinder our freedom to love him, to love God, and love others. So dishonoring our parents hinders our freedom to love God and love others. This is the big idea for us here today. My plan is very simple. We're going to, to, to understand what it means to follow this commandment. We're going to understand the importance of this commandment and how to practice it. You might have a handout um, on your near you, on your seat. If you want, you could be using it to guide you, okay? So first of all, what is the fifth commandment about? Well, it's about treating our parents with respect and value. Ha, Alex, you don't know my parents. They don't, they don't deserve any, any respect. You have no idea what they've done to me. Do you really want me to put this into practice? Do you really want me to honor them? Well, first of all, you might know that parents are not perfect, right? At this stage, you might know that we, we can't own, honor our parents unless they are perfect, because they are not perfect parents. But something very important about this commandment that you need to understand is that God is telling his people and telling us that we need to honor our parents, not because they deserve it or not, but because he chose them to train us. And later on, during the, when we are thinking about the practicality of it, I'll help you to understand how you can even honor those parents who, according to our standards, don't deserve it, okay? But right now, just keep it, that in your mind, okay? God wants us to treat our parents with respect and, and value regardless whether they deserve it, it or not. Because it's not about deserving it. It's about God appointing them as the first ones who have authority over us, okay? So that leads us to the second point. Why? Why is this commandment so important? Well, for two reasons. Number one, honoring our parents prepare us to live in harmony. We are relational beings. God created us into his image. He created us to have a relation with a relationship with him and a relationship with others. And the first school on how to love God and lo love others is our homes. 
It's at home that we learn how to live in harmony, how to love others, how to respect others, instead of breaking the sixth commandment. How you, are you going to avoid killing people or using your anger to hurt them? How are you going to avoid committing adultery? How are you going to avoid stealing? How are you going to learn how to avoid lying to others or coveting what others have? Well, it all starts at home. So the first reason why this commandment is so important is because it is at home with our parents training us that we learn how to treat our classmates well. How to obey our teachers. How to look after those who live in our communities. And when we don't do it, guess what? We face the consequences of our choices, right? Freedom is to do whatever you want. But good freedom is to do whatever you want, take into account the consequences of your choices. And when we live in community, when we live with others, we need to obey rules. Because if we don't obey rules, what can happen? Well, we, need, we, will, we would have to pay for the mistakes and the crimes that we committed. Do you know that here in the UK, 89,000 people, they live in prisons, Hannah. Can you believe in that? 89,000 people, they are in prison. And why are they in prison, Christopher? They did something bad. And God puts people in authority to have us living in harmony, right? So if you turn to Ephesians, um, I mean, Romans chapter 13, Paul is going to tell us something very important about obedience, about submitting to those in authority. Romans chapter 13, I'm going to be reading from verse 1. Paul says, everyone must, to, must submit to governing authorities, for all authority comes from God. And those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. So why did God appoint people in authority? Well, verse 2. So anyone who rebels against authority, or as Christopher said, do bad things, is rebelling against what God has instituted. And they will be punished. For the authorities do not strike fear in people who are doing right. No, but in those who are doing wrong. Would you like to live without fear of the authorities? Do what is right and they will honor you. The authorities, verse 4, a God's servants sent for your good. But if you are doing wrong, of course, you should be afraid, for they have the power to punish you. I'll stop here. So what is Paul saying here? Well, there are authorities in place to keep you safe, to help us to live in harmony. But if you don't understand the importance of that when you are a child, the probability that you are going to grow up to become a, a rebel, not only against your parents, but those around you is huge, is huge. So the first reason why this commandment is so important is because it helps us to live in harmony. Our home is like a lab where kids learn how to treat people. This shows the importance for us parents of training our kids. You know what? It's not the church's responsibility to train your kids. You know that. It's our responsibility as parents. The church can help, but the main responsibility is for the parents. That's why the kids must 
honor, respect their parents. Secondly, honoring our parents help us to reflect Jesus, right? Jesus is God's son, right? And Jesus was extremely obedient. You know that, Christopher. Very obedient to his father. So honoring our parents help us reflect Jesus, who perfectly honored his father, instead of reflecting Instead of reflecting Satan, who rebelled against God. So honoring our parents is so important because it helps us to reflect not Satan, who is a rebel, but Jesus, who is the perfect son, obedient. Why did Jesus come? Well, he came in obedience to the Father. Why did he do, Aaron? You raise your hand. Do you want to say anything? No? Well, he came to die on the cross. What? Did he do anything wrong? Did he rebel against the government? Did he rebel against the Romans? Not really. He died because of us in obedience to the Father. So when we obey our parents, we are reflecting Jesus. Bringing glory to his name. Alex, but this is very difficult. This is very difficult. We've got this sinful nature that doesn't want us to be reflecting Jesus. We, we are part of a sinful society that doesn't want us to be reflecting Jesus. As you said, Alex, Satan is a rebel. He rebelled against God and he wants us to follow him. We've got too many enemies tempting us to do what is wrong, not what is right. Do you remember when we read Ezekiel chapter 36? We read verse 26 and 27. And I'm going to read it again. And I'll give you a new heart. That's a promise, isn't it? Why do we need a new heart? To reflect Jesus properly. Because our hearts are deceitful above everything, right? Jeremiah 17, 9, we read last week. I'll give a new heart and I'll put you, I'll put a new spirit in you. I'll take out your stony, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart heart. I know it's difficult to reflect Jesus by honoring our parents, but Jesus promised that whoever comes to him can receive a new heart, can receive the Spirit who helps us to reflect him. So I know it is difficult. I know how hard is it, it is but with his help, we can do it. We can do it. So this is something very important for you to keep in your mind. Come before him. Ask him to change your heart. Otherwise, you won't be able to obey the fifth commandment. But let me conclude giving you five more tips, okay? How to practice this commandment, okay? First of all, children, this is for the children who, lives with, who live with their parents, okay? Are you ready for this, kids? Yeah? Children should obey their parents, but in love. Did I tell you, did I tell you about my, my, my connection with broccoli when I was a child? Oh, I hated it. I didn't like broccoli at all. Did you like broccoli, Olivia? Do you, do you like broccoli, Hannah? Yeah? What about you two? Aaron, Christopher? Oh, I hated broccoli. A big old, do you like broccoli? I think she likes it. I didn't like broccoli. So whenever, that's fine, Manuel, that's fine. Whenever we had broccoli on the table, guess what? My parents told me, you ate it. 
and I obeyed it, but not in love. Not in love. I hated it. So again, how are you kids going to obey God? Well, you need to do it in love and you need his help. So you pray, ask, please help me to desire to obey God. Okay? But you do that without disobeying God. Okay? You need to be very careful. We, kids, we obey our parents, but never... Never, when they ask us to disobey God. Is that clear? If they ask you to do something that God doesn't want you to do, you don't have any obligation. Let me tell you a story. I've got an uncle who is a pastor. And there was a teenager in his church who was in love with Jesus, very committed to the church. And one day his father said, you're not going to the church anymore. I did not raise you to be a Christian. And he told my uncle, he said, well, my father told me not to come back to church. What do I do? Do I, do I obey God who wants me to be gathering with brothers and sisters or do I obey my father? And my uncle just said, well, um, you're going to obey your father. Um, because he did not ask you to stop reading your Bible, right? Yeah, that's right. He did not ask you to stop praying. Is that, is that correct? Yes. He did, not, he did not ask you to do anything apart from not coming here. Is that right? Yes. So you're going to obey your father, and you're going to keep praying and reading your Bible, and we're going to start praying and, 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 and interceding for you. And that's what the teenager did. He prayed. And one day, the father, on a Sunday, knocked at the child's door. And he asked his child, are you not going to church? And the teenager said, well, you told me not to go to church anymore. Did I? He forgot. He forgot. So sometimes, sometimes you would have, you would have to obey your parents. But without disobeying God, he still had a relationship with God. And that was important. That was very important. Secondly, children should accept their parents' discipline. This is something you might not like. You might not like having to go through discipline. But this is very important. And how can we avoid discipline? How can you avoid discipline, kids? How can that happen? If mom and dad are disciplining you, why are they doing it? Why would mom and dad discipline children? Because you're doing something very, very good, right? Not really. If mom and dad ask you to go to the corner, and they tell you, you're not going to be watching TV for a whole week. It's because you've done something bad. And we need to accept that. We need to recognize that they are doing it because they want to help us to be obedient. However, we do that without fa facing any kind of abuse. Okay? If you realize that mom and dad are disciplining you in a way that is hurtful, you need to tell people, okay? And we can discuss that in our growth groups later. So without facing any kind of abuse. All right. Thirdly, children and adults should forgive their parents. Is that difficult to forgive? Eh, easy. But for some people, it's very difficult. And we need to forgive our parents. But to forgive is not to forget. I said that here before, right? To forgive is not to embrace sin. So if your parents have done horrible things to you in the past, you forgive them without having to embrace 
whatever they've done wrong, it's wrong. You just allow God to be just at his time and in his way without seeking revenge, without allowing your heart to get bitter. So even if you had horrible parents, forgive them. Because that's going to help you. That's going to protect your heart. Now, two tips for the adults here, okay? Number one, adults, you might be independent. You might not be living with your parents anymore. But you still need to honor them. You still need to respect and value them. How can you do that? Well, you can seek for a device. If you're, not, if you're not sure about something, a decision that you need to make, guess what? Our parents, they love us. They want our best. So go and ask them for a device. But without, without being too dependent on them. Because that's the point of adulthood. We are independent. You can ask them for a device, but not for everything you need to do. And I've been in ministry for 20 years. Sometimes some adults, for every single decision they need to make, they need to contact their parents. And this, again, this is good, but not, don't create, don't create this dependency that doesn't allow you to be a grown up. <laughs> so grow up, seek for their, for their advice, but without creating dependency, okay? Lastly, the adults should care for their parents, okay? One of the ways adults can look after their parents is by supporting them, by caring for them, especially when they are not well. They looked after us. They cared for us. They supported us. So when they reach this, the age or when their health is not good, it's our obligation to look after them, but at least they don't deserve it. Honor them. Honor them. But without, without allowing them to interfere too much on your life. Again, 20 years in ministry, and sometimes we as parents, we interfere too much in our children's lives too much and this is not healthy allow them allow them to grow up allow them to make mistakes <laughs> let them go oh it's difficult alex i know i've got three kids and i've been thinking about that but one day they will have to go and i can't be interfering too much in their lives Especially when they get married. <laughs> I need to allow them to make mistakes. Let me conclude. To be free from dishonoring our parents is to be free to love God and others without any hindrance. Okay, so this is the thing for this series. Be careful with this idea that freedom is to do whatever you want. If you are a believer, it's not only that, is it? It should do whatever you want, but take into account what God wants. And he wants us to be honoring our parents, whether they deserve it or not. It's the way we bring glory to his name. Instead of reflecting Satan. It's the way we learn how to live in harmony. How to love our neighbors. Without having to face the authorities for the wrong things we've done against those around us. So let's honor our, our parents by loving them. By forgiving them. Accepting their discipline. Even when it's too difficult. Seeking their advice and caring for them. Can we do that? No, too difficult. I know, but again, God can give you a new heart. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, you can get this 
desire to do the right thing for his glory. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the Bible and for everything we've been learning through these Ten Commandments, Father. We need your help. It's very difficult to honor our parents as children. It's very difficult to honor our parents as adults. But that's your plan. So we want to follow your plan. Help us to seek your good will, pleasing, perfect will. I pray for the children of the church. I pray that you help them to understand this is not just another law. Help them to see the importance of it. And for us, adults, Father, would you please help us to care for our parents in a way that brings glory to your name? Would you please help us to seek their advice because we know they love us? I pray that you continue to guide us here through this series. And I pray that throughout this week, you may bring to our mind this commandment. So we can reflect you at home, at school, at work, in our neighborhood. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.